Uh, thank you, Todd, and it's a, it's a real delight to be here. So as Todd said in his introduction, I think being a young faculty member here at the lab is, is about the, the best job on earth. So it's a tremendously exciting place. As you've already seen, uh, our colleagues, the colleagues that we get to work with are just spectacular. Uh, the students are spectacular. And all of the staff here at the lab is also really spectacular. So it's just an amazing place. And I'm delighted to share it with you today. Um, so I wanted to talk about my research group today. So I run a lab here called High Low Tech. And maybe a good way of expressing the focus of our research group is we're really uh, excited about helping people fall in love with technology. And in particular, we want to find new ways to, to help lots of gift, different kinds of people fall in love with technology. And um, when I talk about falling in love with technology, I guess I should be a little bit more clear. I mean something specific with that. Um, I mean the, the kind of love and affection that we feel for something like a piano or like a camera or like uh, an untilled garden or maybe a, a new box of Lego Mindstorms. So when I talk about love, I'm interested in, in helping people experience the love that comes from creation and construction, not the love that comes just from consumption of artifacts. So we're really excited about finding ways to help people create, build, and experience technology in these ways. Um, we're also very um, serious about reaching out to everyone and helping everyone have these kinds of experiences. So we want to bring this wonderful, creative, uh, immersive experience that's possible here at the Media Lab and places like the Media Lab. We want to bring that kind of experience with technology to as many different kinds of people as we can. And in particular, we want to bring that experience to people who maybe never thought of themselves as technologists before. So people who felt maybe kind of alienated and removed from technology. Um, the way that we do that is we put technology into unexpected places. So we put technology into places where people just never expected it to be before. So an example of technology in a place like that is we've been doing a lot of work recently with blending paper and paint and technology. And this is a wonderful example that one of my students made that just shows what you can do in a creative way when you blend paper and paint and electronics and computation. So this is a pop-up book that one of my students made where every kind of traditional pop-up mechanism from the, the, the mechanisms that spring up from the page at you to the sliders that you pull to get things to happen, each one of those mechanisms is coupled with an interactive computational or electronic mechanism that really enriches the express, expressivity of the design. So this is an example of the kinds of things that you can do when you blend technology and paper and paint. So how do we then take these kinds of developments and help other people work in these spaces? Well, what we do is we build tools and toolkits um, that help other people have these experiences. And then we reach out and we engage people and we bring those experiences to them. So here's an example of one of the toolkits they, that we've designed that helps people work with technology in these new ways. So what this toolkit consists of is a little jar of a non-toxic water-based uh, conductive paint and then a set of traditional electronic modules. And the way that you work with this toolkit is you can glue just traditional electronic modules down to a sheet of paper. And then you can use the conductive paint to just sketch out interactive devices on your sketchbook or on your sheet of paper or on your pop-up book. So what you also see here is a, are images of two um, young girls who are uh, engaged in this kind of activity in a workshop that we taught a few weeks ago. 
um, you can see they're really engrossed in that activity. Um, here's another snapshot from that same workshop. Um, this is a workshop that we taught at the wonderful event uh, Maker Fair in New York City recently. So there's a whole group of people kind of building interactive stuff out of paper and paint. Um, here are a couple of snapshots of the constructions that people made with these materials. Um, and what you can see from these designs is that when you can work with paper and paint and build technology out of these new materials, is that you really change the look and feel of technology in interesting, and if we stop and think for a moment, pretty profound ways. So one thing that maybe immediately jumps out at you is that the affordances of paint and paper are just profoundly different than the affordances of, say, soldering irons and wa uh, wires and computers. So you tend to work with paint in a very gestural and expressive way, and that leads to technology where the form and the function are integrated in pretty interesting ways. So you get electrical circuits that look like this grumpy man here on the left. Um, people also tend to do things with paper that they don't do, again, with wires and soldering irons. They start to fold them. People fold paper, they cut it, they bend it. Um, what kinds of new creative possibilities do those affordances open up? Shown here in the lower right-hand corner is maybe the most interesting of these examples. This, this was made by a participant in one of our workshops who was a potter. And she came to the workshop with a, a, a bowl that she had made in her pottery studio. And she said, I'm going to paint this bowl. Um, so you can do things with paint, like cover strange, unusual, three-dimensional surfaces. You would never think to do this with a different kind of technology. So when we put uh, technology, even kind of the simplest technology, into these new material contexts, these new cultural contexts, really can profoundly influence the kind of technology that we think of building, that lots of other people think of building. Um, so this is one example of kind of a new way of helping people fall in love with technology. What maybe you also started to see in those pictures is that when you give people new tools to work with, kind of new pathways into working creatively with technology, those new tools appeal to new and different kinds of people. And that impacts technology in, a, in, in perhaps an even profounder way by engaging new and different kinds of people in becoming technology engineers. So I want to talk to you um, a little bit about one other project that I've been working on for quite some time, uh, where the cultural aspect, the aspect of engaging new groups of people, is, is particularly kind of important and salient. Um, so this is a kit, uh, a construction kit project that I've been working on for about five years now. Um, so this is a kit that enables you to uh, blend electronics and computation and textile crafting. So this is a kit that lets you sew uh, interactive devices into your clothing and into your fashion. So what it consists of is a little sewable computer that's shown there in the center, and then an assortment of sewable switches and sensors and actuator devices like motors and lights. Um, and you sew those all together with this spool of electrically conductive thread that makes the connections between those pieces. And those connections are soft and flexible and washable and wearable. So this lets you build a really different kind of technology. So this kit, called the Lilypad Arduino, has been commercially available now for um, about exactly three years. And what's been really interesting about it for me and kind of most exciting has been to see how people out in the world, so people away from our lab, have been adopting and using the kit to build all sorts of interesting things. So I'm just going to show you a few of the projects that people out in the world have been uh, building with the kit. So here's one uh, kind of really lovely fashion-oriented example. So this is a dress 
that can detect uh, levels of carbon monoxide in the, in the environment and then can uh, display those through a pattern of lights that are embroidered into the front and the back of the gown. So this is kind of a, a playful and really beautifully executed design that's thinking about pollution and you know, how we can visualize that and learn more about the environments that we're living in and so on. Here's a different kind of example. Um, not sure if you can see that very well, but what this is, this is a more kind of practically oriented example. This is um, a biking jacket. So uh, uh, this designer here sewed LEDs into the shoulders and the waist of a jacket that then um, is used for biking. Um, so I think the LEDs are used to, uh, both as turn signals and in general just to kind of illuminate the rider as they're getting around town on their bike. And again, this is just part of the jacket that the person kind of wears around every day when they're getting, um, moving around on their bike. Um, a third kind of example. Um, in this example, we see how the technology, so the sensors and the computational elements, has been really beautifully integrated with just a traditional uh, style of crafting. So here, a really traditional embroidery kind of needlework piece, but that's been, again, augmented and, and uh, with the technology in a kind of imaginative and interesting way. So you see this interesting blending of a, a high-tech thing and a, and a low-tech kind of traditional practice. Um, and then, then one final example here. Uh, the young woman in this picture here made the, a handbag that she's carrying around. And what this handbag does is it's a handbag um, that can record and then play back all of her knitting patterns. So she was a passionate knitter. And so she designed this system where she can plug her bag into the, her computer and then download a pattern um, for, say, knitting a scarf. Um, and then press a button and play that pattern back. Um, that pattern is played back by a, this row of LEDs that you see on the side of the bag. So really kind of sophisticated, complex device for essentially kind of compiling knitting patterns that she constructed um, in her handbag here. Um, so just stepping back for a moment from all of these examples, I wanted to kind of put together a collection of some of the ones that I've talked about and some additional ones. Um, again, what you see in these examples, as you saw with the paper, is that a new palette of creative materials, a new creative toolkit, gives rise to really different technologies here. So you get a real profound shift in the kinds of things that people are thinking about and the kinds of things that people are building. What you also really see here, and what I think is most interesting and important, is that the group of people who shows up to use this toolkit, the group of people who shows up to creatively engage with this kind of technology is really different than the group of people who normally shows up to participate in technology-oriented activities. So this isn't the same group of people that's soldering together radios in their basement or programming video games or uh, putting together robots. Those are all wonderful things to do, but these people probably just aren't very interested in doing those things. They're interested in doing something else. And if we give them the tools that empower them to work creatively with technology, they'll show up and they'll participate passionately with creativity, with energy, uh, with engagement. And, and I think it's really important for us to invest in giving lots of different kind of tools to lots of different kinds of people so that lots of different kinds of people have access to kind of creative expression with technology. So that's what our um, group is really about. Um, so I want to close before I kind of uh, relinquish my stage here. I wanted to close with an invitation to all of you um, in the form of this gift that Todd mentioned. Um, so that for the past uh, month or so, and especially the past several weeks, uh, the graduate students in my lab and also the wonderful staff here at the Media Lab have been tirelessly laboring uh, to hand build for you uh, a, a kit of our favorite materials. Um, so this is an invitation to you all um, 
to go out and play with technology in a new way. So this is a collection uh, of materials, um, some of our favorite um, kind of inspiring materials that let us play with technology in all sorts of new and um, we find inspiring ways. And we hope that you'll enjoy doing this as well. So you'll get one of these, again, handmade with love uh, from the Media Lab boxes uh, over lunch. And you're welcome, very welcome to come up and see examples of what you can build up in our space uh, on the fifth floor. And we hope you have a lot of fun um, and enjoy this invitation to you all to fall in love with technology again. So thank you very much.